NFL unless you've got one or two characters it's true. on your club, right? Yeah. And they've got them both on the defensive line. So I, I like that. I like that. Today is a beautyless day. You know, the weather's gloomy. We're trying to find ways to cheer you up. We're going to add another baseball player to our list of beauties. And remember, this is not people who look good. This is not people who look bad. This is people who will never get the recognition they deserve via a Hall of Fame, which is why we have guys like Mitch Wild Thing Williams on there who uh, wanted to get – this might be the best beautyless story we've ever had. Mitch Williams this. wanted to get back at Joe Carter for embarrassing him. With that home run. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mitch Williams owned a bowling alley. So he invited in Joe Carter for a bowling match, and Carter destroyed him. <laughs> it was at that moment that Mitch Williams confirmed Carter's his spot like in the Carter's like a 270 beauty bowler yeah. or something that, like that. That sucked big time for Mitch Williams. Matt Stairs, John Cruck, other baseball players on the beauty list. Who do you have? Will Frazier said Pat Borders this morning, and there are people today who are anti-Pat Borders because he was the World Series MVP. <laughs> and sometimes, I don't know if beauties win league championship MVPs. Frank. Yes, That's, isn't that kind of what makes them beauties is that every I now and then know. they've overcome? I don't know. Listen, I understand that. I can sympathize with this vote, but well, having watched Pat Borders as much as I did, and the guy had no arm, no bat. Just looked like he just rolled out of bed. He kind of personified beauty to me in a lot of ways. Kelly Gruber, Jim Abbott. These are recent tweets that we have coming in. Let's bring in Eric Macramal, our Team 1260 Sport Legal Analyst. There are some legal things we'll get to on the NFL front here recently, but uh, let's bring him in. Eric, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, guys. Do you, do you have a suggestion for our beauty list today? <laughs> well, you see, initially, when you emailed me yesterday, I thought the beauty list was a person's whose facial features do not cooperate with each other. <laughs> ah. So I had initially thought of Otis Nixon. Otis but Nixon could be a beauty. He played on like Skeletor. nine teams. Skeletor he played on himself. like nine teams, that guy. So maybe, I don't know, listening to you now, I'm thinking, well, maybe a guy like Steve Rogers, right? Steve Rogers, yeah. He blew it. Yes, he I did. Ask Rick about, you know, he, I'm sure if you invited Rick Monday to his bowling alley, <laughs> he would get his butt kicked, too. <laughs> so that, that is also a possibility, then. You are right, Eric. Uh, how, are, how are things? We didn't catch up with you last week. Things good, Eric? Things good? You know, I, I appreciate the interest. Last week, I was in Antigua, and I'm sitting by the pool, and uh, I get what I think is just the greatest news in the world, uh, that Goatsy had been relieved <laughs> of his duties. Now, I got it late. I got it six minutes after the news broke rather than six seconds as per the usual. Yeah. But I got to tell you, that was a happy, happy day for me and every other Habs fan around that pool. So you celebrated by sitting around the pool and continuing to drink. No, I celebrate by calling everybody Mr. Something and having a Mr. Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> who do you who do you think's next in line there? Who would you who would you want to see replace Coche? You, you know what? It's tough because you know they want they want the guy to be able to speak French, so that narrows the pool. So you know you look at a guy like Julien Brisebois. You know he was an assistant GM appointed by by Ganey. Now he's in Tampa, so appointed by Ganey is a problem. His last name is Breezeba, for which for me is a huge problem. Yes, because he might have been the worst defenseman in the history of defensemen. So uh, you know what, Patrick Wa would be entertaining. He might be incompetent, like Brett Hall was, but he'd be fun. So you know what, put him in. It can't get any worse. How about Pierre McGuire? How would you feel about that? <laughs> you know, I appear on the same station as Pierre. <laughs> yeah. A couple of the same stations as Pierre. Let me just put it to you this way. Uh, I'm fine with Pierre. He has a lot of knowledge. I'm not sure I would want him as my general manager on a regular basis. <laughs> is, that, is, is, that, is that rude? Hey, we're, well, we're asking you, did you just legally cover your ass on that one? Is that, is that I, how it I, I still covered my behind on that, that I'm going to bill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you guys see? As a GM. I'd love Pierre just because I know it would make my co-host here's head explode. Like, literally, they, he would start leaking out of his eardrums if that happened. It's not going to happen, yeah. so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, well, I, here's I, the only thing I know, guys. I know I was talking to one of the Ottawa Sens reporters, and he said he was at a Habs game in the press box. And as you go down the Habs press box, I've been there once to bust tables. And if you hang on left, it gets into, he goes into this dark little tunnel. And he saw Jeff Molson and Pierre Maguire talking. Um, so that sends shivers up my little Egyptian spine. Well, their kids play on the same hockey team together. Really? Yeah, so that, must have, that must have been what they were talking they're tight. about. tight. Yeah. <laughs> well, so long as his kids don't manage the team, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I would like to see the combination of Patrick Law's general manager and Bob Hartley as head coach. 
Well, you know, that news broke here. Uh, Sean Simpson, who works for the, the Team Dollar Leonard here, broke the news a couple weeks ago saying that Juan Hartley had already agreed in principle. Now, I'm not sure if that is indeed the case. I think Molson is going through a whole bunch of uh, potential candidates. But that, that would be good, I guess, you know, in the, in the short term. I'm not sure how long Bob Hartley would last, given his reputation with other human beings. But, you know, probably get a good two or three years out of him. Sean Payton, maybe he's making an appeal. Uh, is he appealing to the guy that gave him the suspension in the first place? And if so, why bother? <laughs> I love it. Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> Usually when you have the word appeal, you, you, it suggests you're going to get someone different look at the same case. But in this situation, Sean, Sean Payton has to appeal his decision to the guy that made the decision in the first place, <laughs> Roger Goodell. So it's like me walking into court and going, hey, remember me from this morning? Yeah. You, you <laughs> mind changing your mind? Get the hell out of my courtroom. I apologize. So there's a really good chance that Goodell won't change his mind. If he does, he may tweak it a bit. Peyton has to forfeit $7.5 million in salary as a result of being suspended for the full year. Maybe that would be reduced a little bit, but I doubt it. I doubt it because this lawsuit, Will, has nothing to do with, or this suspension has nothing to do with Sean Payton or Loomis or Williams. This has everything to do with potential litigation and ongoing litigation. It's sending a message to uh, current claimants, potential claimants, and potential jurors that the NFL takes player safety and a work a safe work environment extremely seriously. And because of that, Peyton, Loomis, and Williams, and the Saints have been made an example of. Eric Macromello with us, our Team 1260 Sports Legal Analyst. Uh, we'll get to Nick Fairley in a second, but uh, what is the latest on SAP versus Shockey? That, that one's fun, too. Uh, SAP, SAP is interesting. Uh, SAP's not a reporter. I think SAP thinks he's a reporter. He's just an analyst. Um, after Colin uh, Shockey, uh, the whistleblower, the snitch, Shockey has a couple, a couple options. Number one, he could sue SAP for defamation. So Shockey has asked for a retraction slash apology. If he gets that, he won't sue Shockey, the NFL network, and potentially the NFL, a separate corporation, but I think we all argue related, for defamation. That's the first thing. I haven't seen an apology yet. I predict it is going to come. Number two is Shockey hasn't yet signed a deal. Now, here Tampa might be interested, but he hasn't signed a deal. He could argue this one thing called retaliation, and that his teams won't sign him because they think he's the snitch or the whistleblower. And Goodell has come out and, and called Sapp's characterization of Shockey as, quote, inaccurate. So basically saying it's not true. So he has that available to him. So uh, we'll see what happens there. And number three, guys, there's actually a federal labor law in the U.S. that protects employees when they go and let someone know that there is an unsafe work environment. So that, that law was broken, assuming that Shockey was the snitch. But again, it looks like he wasn't the snitch. Eric, before we let you go, uh, Detroit Lions defensive lineman just entering his second year, Nick Fairley, was caught uh, with marijuana while he was eating it to try to get rid of the evidence. As a lawyer, do you suggest attempting to eat the evidence, or is there a better way to go about this? Well, if you want to play for the Bengals, maybe you eat the evidence. <laughs> you know, maybe this was his audition. Number two, with the new salary cap in place, he's probably not making that much money anyway, so I probably won't even talk to him, to be honest with you. <laughs> but look, I once had a lawyer at this firm. I sent him out to get evidence, and it was like those cured meats. I need to see the packaging of the meat. It comes back, and the meat's gone. I said, where the hell is the meat? She said, I ate it. I go, you don't eat the evidence. <laughs> it's not common sense, is it? There's nothing common about common sense. You should rename it Uncommon Sense. <laughs> Eric, we appreciate the time, man. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. Take care. There you go. That's Eric Macromella, Team 1260 Sports Legal Analyst. And a hell of a good guy. And a hell of a good guy. <laughs> oh, we should ask. I wonder if I, I would assume he speaks French. What would it be you like think if he, he speaks was, French? What would, you, what would it be him. like if he, he became general manager of your Habs? I'd be fine with that. I know you would. You I, would love I, that. I, yeah, it'd be entertaining. I, yeah. don't, I, don't, I don't mind the entertaining level there. <laughs>